Translation, dear Lord, we offer our respectful obeisances unto you because your existence is completely independent of all material influences. Your Lordship always takes away the devotee's miserable conditions for your brain plans how to do so. You live everywhere as Paramatma. Therefore, you are known as Vasudeva. You also have said Vasudeva as your father and you are celebrated by the name Krishna. You are so kind that you always increase the influence of all kinds of devotees. Purpose. In the previous verse, it has been said, Grahita Maya Guna Vigrahaya that the Lord has set three kinds of bodies, Vishnu, Brahma and Shiva, for the purpose of creating maintenance and annihilation of the cosmic manifestation. The three predominating deities of the material universe, Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva, are called Guna Avataras. There are many kinds of incarnation of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The first incarnation within this material world of Brahma, Vishnu and Maheshwar Shiva. Out of these three, Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva accept material bodies, but Lord Vishnu does not accept a material body. Lord Vishnu is therefore known as Visu the Tasatva. His existence is completely free from the contamination of the material modes of nature. One should therefore not think that Lord Vishnu is in the same category with Lord Brahma and Shiva. The Sastra forbid us to think in this way. Yasto Narayanam Devam Brahma Rudra Devate Samad Venaiva Vikseta Sapasandi Bhavedruham. One who considers Lord Vishnu to be in the same category with Devas like Brahma or Lord Shiva, or who thinks Lord Brahma and Shiva to be equal to Lord Vishnu, is to be considered as Pasandi, a faithless non believer. Therefore, in this verse, Lord Vishnu is distinguished in the verse Namo Visuddha Sadvaya. Although a living entity like us, Lord Brahma is exalted due to his pious activities, therefore, he is given the eye pose of Brahma. Lord Shiva is not actually like a living entity, but he is not the same. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, his position is somewhere between Vishnu, the Supreme Personality of Godhead and Brahma, the living entity. Lord Shiva has therefore explained in the Brahma Samhita, chapter 5, text 45, in this way. Siram yada dadi vikara vishesa yoga sanjayate nahitata prithak asyeto ya sanvutamapi Tada samupaiti karyat 
Lord Shiva is considered to be like yogurt, that he, yogurt is nothing but transformed milk. Nonetheless, yogurt cannot be accepted as milk. Similarly, Lord Shiva holds almost all the powers of Lord Vishnu and is also above the qualities of the living entity, but is not exactly like Vishnu, just as yogurt, although transformed milk, is not exactly like milk. The Supreme Personality of Godhead is also described herein as the Vasudevaya Krishna. Yeah, Krishna is the original Supreme Personality of Godhead and all Vishnu expansions are plenary portions or portions of the origin of the Vishnu Tattvas is Lord Krishna. Consequently, Krishna is the origin of everything. This is confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita, chapter 8, text 8. Aham sarvasya prabhavo mata sarvam pravartate iti madhva bhajante maam buddha bhava samanvita. I am the source of all spiritual and material worlds. Everything emanates from me. The wise who perfectly know this engage in my devotional service and worship me with all their hearts. Lord Krishna says, I am the origin of everything. Therefore, whatever we see emanates from Him. This is also confirmed in the Vedanta Sutra. Janmadi Asyayatha, the absolute truth is it from whom everything emanates. Om Magyana Timarandasya Gyana Nanjana Salakaya Chaksurandalita Moya We have read uh, to the other slokas that pop up from me on the on one page <coughs> and I will continue here. The Supreme Personality of God is also described here as Vasudevaya Krishnaya. Krishna is the original Supreme Personality of God and all Vishnu expansions are his plenary portions of the portion. His plenary portion is known as Swamsa and Kala. The Swamsa or direct expansion is also called Amsa. All Vishnu Tattvas are Swamsa. Direct parts and parcels of the Supreme Personality of God is Krishna. Krishna is known as Vasudev because he is happier than the material world as the son of Vasudeva. Similarly, he is known as Derik Nandana, Yasoda Nandana, Nanda Nandana and so on. Again and again, the Lord is very much interested in increasing the influence of his devotees. Therefore, he is described here in as Prabhavi Sarva Sattvatha. The Sattvatha community is a community of Vaishnava, pure devotees of the Lord, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, has unlimited powers and he, is, uh, he wants to see that his devotees are also entrusted with unlimited powers. The devotee of the Lord is always, therefore, distinguished from all other living entities. The word Hari means one who takes away all miserable conditions and I may have to say means that the Lord is always planning ways to deliver the conditioned soul from the clutches of Maya. The Lord is so kind that He personally incarnates to deliver the conditioned souls and whenever He comes He makes His plan. Paritranaya sadhanam vinase chaduspritam dharma samstapanarthaya Sambhavami Yuge Yuge to deliver the pious and to annihilate the miscreants as well as to re-establish the principle of religion. I advance myself millennium after millennium, Bhagavad Gita chapter 4, text 8. Since the Lord delivers all conditioned souls from the clutches of Maya, he is known as Hari Mahdas. In the list of incarnation, Krishna described as the supreme and original personality of God. Ite cham sakala pum sa krishna sa bhagavan swayam indravi vekala lokam mirlayanti yuge yuge bhagavadam 1 chapter 1 10 to 1 chapter 3 text 28 krishna the original personality of godhead appears in this material world when the demigods who are devotees of the lord are disturbed by the demons so it's very wonderful to 
see all the devotees here. And today we are leading the activities of the Prachetas and the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Krishna, is very much pleased with the activities of the Prachetas. They are very devoted to the Lord and they have got great faith in the Supreme Lord and they are very respectful towards the elders. That has been mentioned even here in the same Canto 4, chapter 30, text 19. There's a beautiful verse, Gri Esu, Avisitam Chapi, Pumam Kusala Karmanam. That the Lord says that Kusala Karmanam means uh, all the auspicious activities of devotional service. When the Lord appeared, towards the Prachetas, he praised them for their wonderful qualities because generally they were very respectful to their own parents, the elders, and they were also very respectful to the other living entities in that verse in the Canto 4, chapter 30, text 19. The Lord says that the devotees of the Lord, they understand through their unalloyed devotional service, the devotee understand that Krishna is the supreme benefactor, is the supreme enjoyer of all the sacrifices we perform. And when the devotee understand that Krishna is the supreme beneficiary of everything in our life, and he says the devotee now offer all the results of their work towards the Supreme. And they also engage in conversing, talking to each other about the glories of the Lord. And even a family man, a Griyasta, by doing so in this way, they're not affected by the karma of this world. So something for us to learn from this verse is that being a devotee means that we develop all these wonderful qualities which can attract Lord Krishna towards our activities and that gives a lot more pleasure and by the pleasurable performance in our devotional service to forward the satisfaction of the Supreme Lord, we also get more pleasure and pleasure and pleasure. So in this way that there are important points and that sloka is that number one, we have to understand that Krishna is the Supreme Beneficiary of everything we do in our life. Number two is that like you know, Krishna says in the Gita chapter 529, Bhaktaram Yadgeta Pasam Sarva Loka Mahiswaram Suriram Sarva Bhutan those who are full conscious of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, they understand Krishna as the Supreme Benefactor and Well-Wisher of the Living Entities. And they also understand that everything to be is the proprietor of everything in the world. In this way, because the devotees are always very full conscious of Krishna, they never at any time saw things in the material world separated from Krishna. So number one, we have to understand this thing that because these are the words of the Lord towards the Prachetas and I think you all already passed through this Lokas. This is in the 19th, text 19. And today we are reading text 24. But it's very important we reflect back to the important, you know, words of the Lord praising the Prachetas on their path of Krishna consciousness. And number two, the Lord says that they now the devotees offer everything to Krishna because they understand He is the supreme proprietor, He is the supreme benefactor, He is the supreme well-wisher. And devotee, like chapter 9, text 27 of Bhagavad Gita, the Lord explained, Yatarosya, Tasnasya, Josi, Rasya, Yatapasya, Sikonte, Yatakurusma, Vashad. Whatever the devotee do, Whatever they eat, whatever they offer, whatever they accept, everything they perform only for the satisfaction of the Supreme Personality of Kali. 
And again, the Lord says in that verse is that that now the devotee, they converse, they always talk, talk on the topics of Krishna consciousness that have been mentioned in the chapter 9, chapter 10, text 9, so the Bhagavad Gita, Machita, Malkata, Prana, Bodayanta, Parasparam, Karayanta, Shamamnetam, Tusyanti, Charamanti, Charamanti, because they are very conscious of Krishna all the time and they are devoted into the path of devotional services and they engage in conversing to each other on the topic of Krishna consciousness. So this is how we conduct our spiritual life, understand Krishna is the supreme benefactor, understand that now we should offer everything, all of our results, our work unto the pleasure of the Supreme Lord. And now we have to understand that you know, when we meet it to among each other, we have to converse about Krishna, no other mundane subject matter. And finally Krishna says, even you are situated in a family life, a family man, generally they got a lot of baggage to carry. Even they are very wonderful, but sometimes you know, they have got their different issues in their life. I'm not a married man. I never, never had a girlfriend, I do not know how oh, the interaction, the result going to be, but you know, through seeing the, our own parents and our family, we understand how life become different, you know, challenges due to the interaction between husband and wife. We have seen our own parents, how they interacted. So in this way that year, we have to understand that even a family man is not, you know, affected by any any kinds of karmic reaction in this world because their consciousness is very clean, very clear. They understand Krishna is the supreme benefactor. They understand everything to be offered Krishna for his own pleasure. And they understand that conversation we make between each other among the devotees about Krishna that makes Krishna more happy and uh, in return Krishna shower the blessing and happiness towards uh, the devotees. And finally, if you are a married man, you should not too much worried about this thing because everybody has got their own problem. The brahmacharya have got their own problem. The Griyas have got their own problem. Vanaprasa has got their own problem. The sannyasi has got their own problem. The material world is full of trouble and difficulties. Mahamukitya punajan madukalayam asasvatam napnuvanti manasam siddhim paramangatam ma brahma bhavanam logi. Even Lord Brahma is also in big trouble. <laughs> Everybody, there was, a, there was a party in the heavenly planet. Everybody were enjoying. Heavenly planet means everybody to enjoy that. So everybody were enjoying at that moment. Somewhere in the corner there was one baby crying. Nobody knows who left the baby there. The baby was crying and crying and crying and everybody were annoyed. You know, there was so much disturbed in their mind that we have come to enjoy her. And there's one baby, you know, crying. They do not know what to do now, what to do with this baby. And they went to Lord Shiva for his advice. Lord Shiva said not to worry about it. I got a, a devotee, very good devotee. He is married to a very good devotee also. Both husband and wife, they were married for 10 years. They are in Sri Rangam in South India. And they've been coming every day to me praying, please give us a child, please give us a child. Now let us pass the crying child to that family. So simply the problem was from that side being passed to this side and problem is always problem. <laughs> so in this way that the whole material world has got their own problem and own demands. But somewhere or other they have to understand that they have got our duty to perform in the world. A brahmachari, they have got their duties, and the griyasas, they have got their duties. In the chapter 4, text 26, Krishna explains, Sultrindriyani anya samyatmakne sojuvati 
सब्धारी विषयान अन्य इंद्रियानग्नेश जीवती र ब्रह्मचारीज जनरली दे ऑफर ऑल दिया माइंड एंड सेंसेस एंड दे हियरिंग प्रोसेस ओनली टू यर अबाउट द सुप्रीम पर्सनलिटी ऑफ कॉल इट ब्रह्मचारीज जनरली दे डोंट हैव एनीथिंग एल्स टू ऑफर टू द लॉर्ड दे आर डोंट ओन एनीथिंग अराउंड इन देयर लाइफ they don't have a possession they don't have a family they don't have a children and all the brahmacharis they can do is that they offer themselves to krishna and krishna says the griyasta they offer the object of the senses that means the object they offer their wife to krishna they offer their children to krishna they offer their car to krishna they offer their houses to krishna and they offer their money to krishna in this way that both are offering something to krishna and krishna beautifully explain dravya yagya tapo yagya yoga yagya tada pare swaja yagya na yagya cha yatha ya samsita vratta in the chapter 4 text 28 krishna explain that people offer their possession whatever they got sometimes they offer their possession to krishna and there are people they sacrifice they have do austerity for the pleasure of the lord and there are people they go to the forest they try to become a great yogi and there are people they try to please krishna through their studying of the vedas and the scriptures krishna says that all these people Slowly they will come to him. Sarve pyata yagya vido yagya sapita tarmi sa yagya samsito bhujo yanti brahma sanatana. In the chapter four, text thirty, Krishna explains that all these people, whoever giving something to Krishna, Krishna says somebody, somebody they go to the demigods. Somebody goes to the forest. Somebody perform different kinds of yoga, and the Lord says, "Those who knows the meaning of what they are doing, they will come back to me. They must know the 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 meaning, the the intention of what you are doing is very very important. It doesn't matter." You are not coming to the temple. It doesn't matter. You are going to the demigod's temple. Doesn't matter. You go to the forest, but you must know why you are doing all those things. If you understand the purpose of life, kāye namanasa buddhaya kevalir indriya rapi yogi nam karma purvanti siddha sangatya yajutha indi chapter five text eleven. Krishna explained the only purpose of human life is to somewhere or the purify their mind. Purify the intelligent, purify the body. So our only purpose of life is that somewhere or other, coming into this material world, we are contaminated, and somewhere or other, we are not able to think properly, we are not able to speak properly, we are not able to act properly, and because of these three kinds of you know uh, um, contamination of the mind and speech and the body, it creates many other, many other different kinds of problems in our life. For the mistake we do with our mind, next life you have to be born as a human being. When the mistake you do with your words, your speech, next life you have to be born as an animal. And for the mistake you do with your body, beating and kicking and killing, to many things you do with the people, violence, and you have to be born as plant and trees. So Krishna is giving us an opportunity for us to clean the contamination of our eyes and our mind. in our speech and our body by performance of the devotional service unto him in this way we have to understand that everything we do in our life we must know why we are doing this thing the meaning of all our activities our intention is very must be very very clear doesn't matter proper says a letter proper wrote to one of his disciple i think in 1975 He says that you know, in Krishna consciousness, all the service are the same. Whether one is doing the puja, whether is one is distributing the books, whether one is sweeping the floor, whether one is washing the pots, whether is one is you know one is you know chanting the Hare Krishna mantra, whether one is writing books, 
Prabhupada says in Krishna consciousness, all the activities are the same. There is nothing, one is high and another is low. Uh, there was some misunderstanding among the devotees because some devotees thought maybe the book distribution is much more better, much more higher than, you know, sweeping the floor in the temples. So then one time uh, they came to probe, but the book distributor, they came to probe, but to reconfirm what is higher. So they were telling that, you know, all these activities are there, so uh, which one is better? But they were, they were hoping that Prabhupada would say that the book distribution is the better because they are coming from the Sankirtan. And Prabhupada, he says that, you know, the better is that you become Krishna conscious. <laughs> Whatever you do, if your conscious is not Krishna, if your conscious is only for your, you know, selfish interest, it doesn't make Krishna very happy in his life. So, importantly that, you know, our intention must be very, very proper, very, very clear. You know, in the chapter 4, text 16, Krishna says, Kim karma kim akarmeti kavayo pyataram mojita tate karma pravikshami yajyatvam mukhiya se subhan. My dear Arjun, there are people very highly educated, you know, even the intelligence is not very clear, not knowing about what is action and what is inaction. By giving you this information, you may come out from the miserable condition of material life. Even those who are very highly educated in this world, they are not very sure, they are not, do not know what is action means, what is inaction means. No? Karmane api bodhavyan, bodhavyan cha vikarmana, karmane cha bodhavyan, gahano karmano gati, in the chapter 4, text 17. Krishna explained the intricacy of karma activities, actions are not easy to understand. No, it's not easy to understand what is karma, what is akarma, what is vikarma. That activities you do which will bring good and bad in your life is not easy to understand. That activities which do not produce any kinds of reaction do not understand. There are activities which are forbidden, you cannot do at all. And people are not understanding any of these things. And Krishna says, Karmane akkarmaya paschat akkarmane karmaya sayukta krishna karma kisa buddhiman manusya sayukta krishna karma kri. The chapter 4, text 18, Krishna says, an intelligent person, they see action and inaction and inaction in action is very intelligent and he considered to be transcendental in the material world. That means Krishna wants us to see the inner motivation, inner motive of a person. It doesn't matter whether you are living in the temple, you are living with your family, you are living in your factory, whatever you are moving around, but what is your intention, inner intention has to be very clear. The inner intention is to become purified in our life. Life after life, we are struggling in the material world. Birth after birth, we are going through all kinds of miseries of life. Nobody has become free from any sort of life. Unfortunately, due to forgetfulness, people do not realize that we are suffering so much in the material world. There was a man, he went to the doctor for, for some, you know, um, health checkup. And after the, you know, checkup of this man, and the doctor told him, you got uh, good news and bad news. So the man asked him, you know, what is the bad news? The doctor told him that, you know, you got, uh, you got, you know, cancer. And, you know, you may have another nine months to live. That is the bad news. So then he asked him, then what is the good news? He said, within this, you know, disease of cancer, you got another problem that is a forgetfulness of memory, Alzheimer, you know. He says that, you know, you will forget that you got a cancer, that's the good news. <laughs> you know? So the material world, people are going through all kinds of miseries of life, but they don't have time to think about any of these things because all their energy and time is taken away. 
you know, with all this materialistic way of life and they come back home, they're very tired and to forget of their tiredness, they may go and drink some liquor, they may go and smoke cigarette, they're going to the social media, they're going to know so many other activities they do just to forget their, all the difficulties they are going through on their life on that day. So day by day, uh, they are not able to understand that any time the call may come, we may have to die and go. And what else happens after that, uh, they are also not very interested. Prabhupada oh, says in America when he was there, he says, you know, we are talking about life after death and somebody comes to me and asks me, is there sex after death? <laughs> so again, again, their own mindset is, you know, how to, you know, somewhere other people are, you know, they are away from this, you know, a reality of life. So in the material world, we have to understand there is no profit. Prabhupada says the material life is like a digging and piling society. You know, you want to make one building somewhere, you have to dig somewhere to make this building. So one side you are digging, another side you are piling. So one side you are losing, another side you are gaining. So material world is like a digging and piling society. Somewhere or other they are thinking that by digging this site, you know, the other site, and you know, I'm piling, I'm very happy. So we are going through all kinds of, you know, different kinds of lifestyle, hoping and hoping and hoping, you know, hope against hope, you know. That's what people say, hope against hope. When there was a dog living in a rich man's house, you know, and the dog was free to move forward. And there was another street dog, you know, he met, you know, he saw this dog, you know, he's in the rich man's house. But you know, he, has, he hasn't got his own freedom. So the dog in the street, you know, he told this dog, you know, you're living inside, are you happy? He said, I'm very happy. He said, but you're locked all the time in the house, how you become happy? You know, you should have your own freedom. And then uh, he said, you know, I can help you to come out from there, you come out. And the dog, you know, the rich man dog said, no, 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 I don't want to come out. And the street dog asked, you know, why you don't want to come out? He said, look, you know, there is a hope, you know, I can become the owner of this house. <laughs> and how is that hope? You know, the owner, you know, the rich man's daughter, and she's very playful and she's running around. I think she's in love with the driver of this house. And, you know, the father came to know, the father told her, you know, even I will allow you to marry to the dog, not to the driver. So I got some hope that, you know, maybe <laughs> hope against hope, that is the material way of life. But somewhere or other, we come back to this understanding. Krishna was very pleased with, you know, Prachintas because of the attitudes are very favorable towards Krishna consciousness. We do a lot of our activities, but we have to sometimes check whether are we doing all Krishna conscious activities favorably for the satisfaction of the Lord. You know, Anya Bilasita Sunyam Jnana Karmadi Anandritam Anikulyana Krishna Siran Bhakti Uttamam The high, the better the devotional service is that we render service unto the Lord favorably, not unfavorably. Like Prabhupada writes, he says that the Kamsa also was always thinking of Krishna. But somewhere or other, you know, Krishna did not appreciate the way Kamsa is thinking of him because it was very unfavorable. So we have to perform bhakti in a very favorable way. Just like, you know, the, the Duryodhan, he prepared so much of feast, you know, food when Krishna went there for peace talk, you know. Duryodhan prepared so many kinds of food, you know. Uh, in the palace, but uh, Krishna did not accept his food, but he went to the you know, Vidura's house and then there Vidurani gave him a banana skin, but Krishna happily accepted the banana skin from Vidurani's end. But here so much of nice food has been prepared by Duryodhana and Krishna did not accept that. So then the next day when Duryod Krishna came to Duryodhana, and uh, Duryodhana asked him, I prepared so much of food for you, why you don't come to take your food? You know? 
The first thing Krishna told him is that I've come here with certain message, you know, a messenger, I'm a messenger. A messenger should not, you know, indulge in anything else before he finish his work. I should have, I should, I should finish my work first for the purpose of coming. If I can finish it successfully, then we can dine together. But I've not, you know, done this work. Number one. Number two is that you said, you know, you prepared this food for me for the two reasons. People can eat in somebody's house. One is that if they are hungry, they will eat. Second thing is that even they are not hungry, but you know, it is given out of love to please that person. They will eat. But my dear Arjun, I'm not hungry today, and you don't have love for me. How to accept this food? So everything ultimately we have to understand that ultimately everything is about you know love and nothing else in Krishna consciousness. And how to develop that love? Everything should be done in the mode of favorable. Our inner intention should be, you know, only to make Krishna happy, only to make Krishna satisfied, and nothing else. Not to post to somebody or somebody seeing that, you know, I should do, maybe, you know, I should do this one, that one, to impress others. That is not going to impress Krishna. Only thing will impress Krishna is that sincerely, honestly, with much of your devotion from your heart, you render whatever you give to Krishna. As I said before, there is nothing big for Krishna, there is nothing for small for Krishna. Krishna is unlimited. So in that unlimitedness, we are very limited, we are very difficult to you know, estimate something is big and small. So in Krishna consciousness, there is nothing big and small. Only thing is that somewhere or other, we have to make sure that you know everything we do very favorable, you know. So in this way, Krishna consciousness becomes palatable, very nice to perform, very happy to do, because Krishna is pleased by our intellection, and we are pleased by the intellection of Krishna. So in this way, here Prabhupada says that Krishna is very concerned about his devotees. You know, he's always thinking how to keep the devotees happy. Always he's trying to take away the miserable condition of devotees' life. So Krishna is working very hard to help us. The problem is that we must be ready to take the help of Krishna. Like Prabhupada says, you have fallen in the well. And somebody is throwing the rope, you know, and he's uh, giving you, offering you a helping hand, and you have to help yourself to catch the rope so that he can pull you out from the well. But you know, in the same way, Krishna is offering his service to everybody, but somewhere or other, the living entity, they think that, you know, they got other protection in their life, you know, other than Krishna. You know, when Krishna, when the Pandavas were in the forest, and Kamyaka forest, Krishna went there, you know, and Krishna wasn't very happy that the Pandavas was been, you know, thrown in the forest. And Krishna went there, he was very angry, he told them, you know, my dear, you know, Arjun, I have to go and kill this Duryodhan today. How he can do these things to your family? Arjun said, Krishna, don't worry about it. And we, to pacify Krishna, he talked about the glories of his own activities, Krishna consciousness. And he pacified Krishna. And Krishna told Arjun, today I'll tell you something. There is no difference between you and me, the Pandavas. There is no difference between you, the Pandavas, and me. Whoever praise you, they are praising me. Whoever, you know, depraising you, they are depraising me. Whoever blaspheming you, they are blaspheming me. Whoever honoring you, they are honoring me. There is no difference between you and me because our mission, our aim is once the same. I've come to the world to re-establish the Dharma and you have come to the forest for the same purpose because of Dharma is nothing else. Why the Pandavas got into a big trouble is because of Yudhisthira. But Yudhisthira was not thinking anything bad for any other people. Yudhisthira was all the way trying to avoid the battle, trying to avoid, you know, something not very good for anybody else, especially the, the Kauravas, the Duryodhana. 
The one time Narada Muni came and told you this year, my dear, this year, there is going to be a big war and a big disaster. Everything going to be destroyed in the world just because of you, you this year. Narada Muni told him, man, and Dushu was thinking, what is going to happen because of me? And he went to Vyasadev. And Vyasadev says, yes, something is bad is going to happen. You will be the main reason. So from that moment onward, Yudhishthya was thinking, I must be good with everybody and every action. Anything people say, don't say anything bad. Just be good and good and good and good. Avoid any you know, misunderstanding that will create a war and destroy everything. So he was you know, respecting everybody and that is the time Duryodhana invited him to come and gamble. Then he, he thought, you know, if I don't go, then three will get upset, you know, then there will be misunderstanding, that will lead to a bad thing. So he thought, better avoid all those things. He went there, just as a good man, thinking that, you know, to avoid the bad thing, but somewhere or other, that is the beginning of everything. So you got your plan. Krishna has got his plan. <laughs> Ultimately, Krishna's plan become victorious. So in this way is that uh, Krishna has planned everything for the world, you know. We don't need to plan anything in New Year, Krishna has planned. And what we should do, all you have to do is that, you know, follow Krishna's plan. Like you, you go, you want to act in the movie and the movie has got a director, you know. And they've got um, musicians, you know. And they also got, you know, script writers, you know. So movie, everything, you know, directed, it's already there. And you've been paid to go and act according to what is written in the script there. Similarly, Krishna has written the whole script for everybody in the world. All you have come here, just acting only. Nothing else. Because you are not here also, the movies go, will go on. Your wife will go on, your husband will go on, your children will go on, nobody is going to die because you die and gone. But that is the you know, movie. So Krishna has written everything and he has directed everything. He wants everybody to come and act, you know. And he's sitting and enjoying the movie, oh, you're born in Switzerland, okay, very nice. That's my plan. You're born in Malaysia, that's very nice. And he born in Sri Lanka, that's where now you come to, you know, Switzerland. Oh, that is not nice, very cold, I did not write. <laughs> and you come to Switzerland, you worry, you know, I'm not happy, I want to go back somewhere, but you, <laughs> you don't know where to go back. You know, the white wants to become brown, the brown wants to become white, everybody is somewhere in the unhappy in their life, because they're all coming out with a new script. And the movie is already written in that manner, you just act only. The problem is that we are writing a new script, we are not happy with the script <laughs> written by Krishna. So in this way, there are a lot of, you know, tests and tribulations and challenges are happening in our life. Somewhere or other, yeah, Krishna is the ultimate <coughs> door of everything in this world. And Krishna, here yeah, Prabhupada says that Krishna is very concerned about the devotees. Why? Because the devotees are very concerned about Krishna. Just like Krishna told Arjun, there's no difference between you and me. Our aim is only one, principle of dharma, nothing else. The same way because the devotees are thinking of Krishna, Krishna is thinking of devotees. Sadhana, Radhayam Maun, Sadhana, Radhayatuam. That the Lord says, you know, that uh, devotees do not know anything other than me, and I do not know anybody other than the devotees. That is the relationship between devotees and Krishna. They only know Krishna in the world and Krishna only knows the devotees. Isn't it? When Rukmani told Krishna, you do not know one thing, and Krishna was wondering what that I do not know, where I'm Samitani. I said that I know everything. <coughs> I know the past, I know the present, I know the future. <coughs> what is that one thing I do not know? Rather than, you know, Rukmani said, you do not know how much the devotee loves you. <laughs> and how much the enjoyment, pleasure they gain more than you in that loving relationship. And you don't even know about your own self. Sri Radhaya Pranayama Hima Kidrisam Vanaiva 
येन स्वाधाय येन भूतात्मधुरिमान कीदृशं महामादिया सौख्यं चास्यं मधुरिमान कीदृशं वेत्ति लोभत येन भूतात् समजने सच गर्भौ सिन्धौ हरिंदौ एंड टू नो दिस थिंग द डिवोटीज एंड कृष्णा वांट्स टू कम बैक अगेन But Rukmani told Krishna, she said, you do not know one thing. Krishna said, what is that one thing? I do not know. I know everything. And Rukmani said, you are sitting here in you know, Dwaraka, but always you are calling, crying for Radhe, Radhe, Radhe. So you do not know about the love of Radha. And Krishna was thinking, oh, unless I enter into the body of Radha, otherwise I do not know about this one thing. So he goes into a devotee's body, because you are very concerned about devotees. And Radha is very concerned about Krishna. That is the, no, the friendship, the um, relationship between Krishna and his devotees. Krishna is always thinking of devotees because devotees are always thinking of Krishna. So in this way, you know, we we understand the activities of preachers are very beautiful. The Lord says. I'm very impressed with your devotion. Number one, because you are very, you know, respectful towards the elders, you know. And number two, that you know, you are very respectful even to your own family members. Number three, you are very respectful to all other living entities. And number four, that you know, you got the kind of faith in the path of devotional services. He said, for this reason, I'm ready to give you any boon you want. So Krishna can bless our life, you know, if we can understand that why we are here for, and how to conduct our our devotional service in a favorable way, that Krishna can be impressed. And thank you so much for being here this morning. And anybody got any questions or any doubts? But today I got a long class, you know. Ten to twelve, I got one class, and two to four, another class. I don't know. I, I survived till that time. I just, you know, I came, missed the flight. You know, the flight delayed in uh, from Malaysia to Istanbul, Turkey, and I have to stay back a day, and then fly again. And uh, too much moving around with the car, me, you know, I just, you no, know, so difficult. Is there any questions? So what is it? What is your takeaway today? What do you understand? Yeah. I think um, that we have to act in a favorable way. Okay. But uh, have to understand what makes Krishna happy, and I think like I think behaving with other people, I have to be conscious how I'm yeah. treating others. Okay, Dharma the Prabhu. I have a question, Maharaj. Yes. You uh, mentioned how Krishna he wrote the script. Yeah. And can you say something? How in the material world we are all we decided to be independent from Krishna. Yeah. And we have our karma, which yeah. uh, because we have performed sinful activities, and now somehow in the script it seems to be already. Included that we again act sinfully, yeah. or is there? Uh, it doesn't mean that Krishna is kind of neutral. He, he doesn't really have a desire for us. How we? Well, everything you have to understand. The whole problem is that forgetfulness of Krishna. That Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explained Krishna Boli se jiva anadhir bhayen muka atheva maya tere. Dehasam saram dukha. Bahir Mukha may come into this world. Why we come to this world? Because of forgetfulness of Krishna. So now Krishna is the supreme personality of Godhead, and is totally independent from any kinds of influence in the world. But somewhere or other we are being part and parcel of the Lord Himself. Somewhere or other we also had that independency, that freedom. <coughs> In a very minute way, Prabhupada gave an example like the ocean 
and the water of the drop of the water from the ocean. So we are like the drop of the water from the ocean, which has got the similar quality. So all the time it was maintained that Supreme Lord has got his mind independent unlimitedly, and we all the time have got our independent limitedly. But somewhere or other you always you know, had the option to make your choice in your life. Because Krishna wants to see that He has created us to voluntarily you not know, to love each other. The moment you put some sort of condition into a love that does not become volunteer. You know, all about unconditional love, you know, Krishna is expecting and He created us, you know, to for His pleasure. Just like, you know, when we are born in this world, we have not requested our mother and father, I want to be born in Switzerland. Nobody, I wanted to be born in Africa, India. No. Karma Daivane Trena Jantu Deho Papati in the Chakanto 3, chapter 31, text 1, Krishna explained, you know, Dev explained that everybody are pushed, you know, into a you know, particular womb of the mother. And the child goes into the womb, has no option, no, he cannot even choose his own mother, where I wanted to enter, where I wanted to be born. No option for his life because you know, of their own, you know, reaction from many, many of a lifetime. In this way that, you know, we had an option, we had our minute independence, somewhere or other, we wanted to try outside of, you know, the kingdom of the Lord. Just like, you know, we, the parents, you know, they give birth to a child. It's not for the pleasure of the child, it's for their own pleasure. They're married. Sometimes you will see the married people who are married 10 years, 20 years, they don't have the children, they become very depressed in their life. They're very upset, you know, we are married so many years, you know, we are not having a child. They go to many temples, look for a child. Sometimes they go into adoption of a child. So they wanted to bring in the child into their life. It's only for their own satisfaction. So when the child is very small, baby and everything, he saves the parents, he enjoys with the parents. Slowly when he's growing up, you know, he's, you know, manobhav, you know, the mind demand changes as he grows, you know, more bigger. And slowly he wants to have his own room, he wants to have his own, you know, independency, he wants to have his own freedom. Somewhere or other, after some time, you know, the child wants to go away from the parents. Actually, in the in the Western country, it is all very normal, you know. In the Eastern, in, in Asian country, normally, you know, no parents will encourage the children to go away from the family. You know, even the children are married, many ones that, you know, of course, nowadays, you know, due to too many kinds of complications in the world, uh, parents marry, they say, okay, go and live outside, you know. But up to the point of marriage, you stay with your parents. This is how we've been brought up in our family. So sometimes, you know, we see in the Western country that, you know, the children, you know, go away from the family, they take a room, they stay outside. But, you know, it's not the same when you are staying with your family. When you stay with your parents, you know, your food is cooked, your food is provided, your clothes are washed, you know, everything is, you know, on the table, everything is nicely taken care. When you go away, then you, sometimes you realize, it was very good, I was with my parents, you know, everything is taken care. You know, some children want to come back and some some children, you know, they have the hope, you know, like we said, hope against hope. Oh, I think everything will be okay. You know, so let it in this way that uh, Krishna has created every living being for his own satisfaction, for his own pleasure. And because you know, he has given that minute independent in everybody's life, then we chose that, you know, to try outside of Krishna to be happy. And for that reason, now we are reading today, Krishna has created, you know, the first thing come out in, you know, Purusha Havata, you know, then, you know, that Krishna, you know, comes as, you know, Balaram, and from Balaram comes, you know, kind of Karanadakta Vishnu, and from him, you know, comes, you know, Garbhadakta Vishnu, from him comes, you know, Sirodakta Vishnu. In this way, you know, the, you know, Purusha Avatar appeared in the world simply to make the creation of this material world because we wanted to come out from there and we wanted to try, you know, away from Krishna, how our life is going to be. And the package deal is that, you know, that in the, in the spiritual world there is no birth, old age, disease and death. And because this is our option that we want something different and here comes, you know, uh, the package deal is that, you know, you're born and you go through old age, disease and death. 
That is, you know, we made our own decision. Like, you know, there was a man, and an architect, you know, and then he's, he's, he married to a, a very a big rich man who is, you know, developer. So the developer, you know, uses a son-in-law architect to make, you know, project houses here and there. And, you know, uh, one time the, you know, the, the developer said, I'm going away for six months, you know, but, you know, there's one, one you know, big project I have to do, one, one very good standard quality, you know, bungalow I have to build, you know, so you can use any amount of money to do that, you know, bungalow house. So after six months, I come back, you know, you can hand over to me. So in this way, he went away. And then the architect's son, you know, he was a little bit, you know, you know, crazy for money. And he was thinking how to take some of this money, you know, no need to worry about this bungalow making quality, this and that. So he took a lot of money, but he built a bungalow without much of, you know, quality products, you know. So after six months, when the father-in-law came, you know, then he, the architect's son, you know, he offered, you know, this is the building I've made with so much of, you know, money and quality. And uh, the, the developer, father-in-law, he knows that, you know, the son-in-law, you know, he made, you know, he, he, you know, took the money from there. And the father-in-law, he said, actually, you know, I made this bungalow to give you as a gift to take it, you know. So like that, you know, Krishna gives you an option, but somewhere that we wanted to, you know, forget Krishna, we become ungrateful. You know, that's the only thing I could say that, you know, uh, everybody in the world are very ungrateful people, you know, always look into the bad things, what you've done instead of good things. Out of 100, you know, things you do in your life, 99, you do something good for people. One thing you do, little bit, you know, wrong or mistake, and people look into that one thing rather than the 99 things. Unless you are born, a, you know, a, a good man, a devotee. Krishna called, you know, Duryodhan, he called, you know, Yudhisthya, he gave them, you know, two tasks, you know. He told Duryodhan, you go and find a good man in the world. And he told Yudhisthya, you go and find bad man in the world. So two went around, after some time they came back, you know. And uh, Krishna asked Yudhisthya, did you find any bad people in the world? Yudhisthya said, I'm not able to find any bad people in the world. I went to one man, you know, and uh, he, he seems to be, you know, very bad fellow, you know, money, wake up, smoke cigarette, drink alcohol, he beats his wife, you know, he does all kinds of bad things. But night I saw him that, you know, he keep on tulis, he go around three times, tulis, yani, kani, chapapani, or for obeisance, and then he pray like that. So even though every day you do bad things, but I look at him, he's doing what good things, I do not find any bad fellow. So, and Krishna asked Duryodhan, did you find any, you know, good fellow? Duryodhan said, I go everywhere, but I cannot find, you know, there's one man I saw that morning, wake up, Mangalati, do everything, you know, everything you do very, very good, but night I see him that, you know, smoking cigarette, you know. So I don't see any good fellow. Krishna says, you know, because Duryodhan, you are bad fellow, <laughs> you will never find good fellow. And Nudi says, by nature, is a good man, so you never find any bad man. So if you're good, you see everything good in others. If you're bad, you see everything bad in others. There's nothing good and bad in the material world. It's just how you, you know, perceive everything in the material world, you know. So let like it, you know, the knife is knife. Is a knife has nothing, you know, is an element. And if the knife is in the murderer, and he murder people, the knife is the barber, and you know, he shave for people. So knife is just a neutral element, but how we use it then becomes more, you know, comfortable. So in the way is that, you know, somewhere or other you have come here. And now you know the reason after come to Prabhupada movement, you know where you've come. The mother Prabhu, you know, then you have come here. To material world. Because of your misuse of your mind with independence. You thought maybe somewhere else more better than that because you want to be the boss, you want to be the master. And you don't like to be under you know, Krishna all the time. He thought, let me try by myself, my own. So Krishna is very kind, the child is asking, Krishna says, okay, I'll make you know, Switzerland for you, go there. Everybody thinking I go to Switzerland, become very happy. You know? And Switzerland has got a name all over the world, that all the money is in the Switzerland. <laughs> When I was coming to Switzerland, one of the devotee friends said, Maharaj, 
are you going to go open and bank account in Switzerland or what? <laughs> I said, why? Because all the money is there. I don't know whether you're going to withdraw all your money from there or what. So Switzerland, when people think, you know, it's a heaven and earth, you know. They got all the money, people are very happy, everything is very nice. True or not? No. You say it's not true, but you know, all over the world, people are waiting when I can come here. You know? <laughs> So like that, you know, like, you know, yesterday some family was talking to me, they said, you know, Maharaj, you know, life is so horrible here, I don't know where to go back. <laughs> but they have come from Sri Lanka. <laughs> <laughs> and there are people waiting, line up in Sri Lanka to come here. And those have come here for after some time, they want to go back, you know. <laughs> enough is enough. So now, uh, there is our choice. Krishna is very kind, he doesn't force us anybody. It's all about unconditional love. So now we come here by coming into proper movement, we understand actually we made a great mistake of coming to this material world. You know, always there's a problem of one after another, one after another. Till you die, there's going to be a problem. If not this problem, there's going to be another problem. So now you understand that, you know. But somewhere or other, for Dhammadara, you know, you've got to be happy because you're not married. So your problem finishes with you alone, you know. But those who are married, you know, and they have to think about, you know, their problem, they have to think about wife problem, they have to think about children problem. You know, it's extended, the problem is extended everywhere, you know. So somewhere there you are, you know, you got a very less problem. What is less problem? You are the problem. <laughs> There's no problem. No problem, why? No, wife is not fighting with you. Wife is not demanding, I need no this and that. Nobody disturbs you at all, anything here, isn't it? And there are no children that, you know, they're making your life, you know, horrible. You want to sit for peacefully for a few minutes, but they're not allowing you to do that. You don't have father-in-law, you don't have mother-in-law, you're away from your father and mother. You're away from all kinds of, you know, trouble and, you know, challenges of life. You're just by yourself. So what is your problem? And you got a place to stay here, you got you no know, food to eat, and you can travel around wherever you want to go. Today or tomorrow you want to go to India, you can go. True or not? You wanted to leave the temple tomorrow, you want to go to India, can you go to India or not? Devotees are very easy, you know. When when the devotee called me to come, you know, and uh, I said maybe next time no no Maharaj come this time. And, so the very next day I booked the ticket. But we don't have money, so much money to go here and there. But somewhere there, Krishna makes the arrangement for you, for devotee life. Everything becomes very easy. But somewhere there, you know, leaving Krishna and coming to this world. Like Prabhupada mentioned, you know, a few purposes ago, fish out of water is always, you know, not happy. So we are out of, you know, Krishna's abode, you know, coming to this world with all kinds of material arrangement. We are not very happy here. You know, because like a fish out of water. In reality, you see, there's no problem at all. What's your problem? No problem at all. I don't know. Unless you've got some, you know, uh, you know, some selfish interest in yourself, some selfish desire, you know. Arjuna asked Krishna, no, Adakena Prayuktam, then in chapter 3 takes a white people indulging in, you know, different kind of, you know, sinful activity. Krishna say, Kame, Sakrode, Sarajogone, say all due to the desire which is emanated from the mode of passion, you know. So if you don't have any desire, you have no problem at all. You have no anything at all, like a dead body, you know, dead body got any desire, you know, you're going to carry the dead body, dead body not going to say, say thanks to you. You kick the dead body, not going to fight back with you. So unless you become a dead body that you have no desire at all at all in the material world, unless you got some of your own plan and Krishna has got his plan and you go different by his own script, you write your own script, then you got into a trouble. So end of the day we have to understand as a as a brahmachari, you can do so much for Krishna. As a sannyasi, we can do so much for Krishna because we are not in any way you know, troubled by anybody around. True or not? We are not troubled by anybody around. You got all the time to serve Krishna. Except the Griyastas. 
They, you know, they, they have to think about their wife, have to think about their children, you know. And they are answerable towards, you know, their mother-in-law and father-in-law. If you don't take care of your wife, you know, then your father-in-law may be upset with you. Your mother-in-law is very upset with you, you know. So let it, you know, uh, you know actually there is no problem. Prabhupada say you are the problem. Mm-hmm. Otherwise there is no problem at all. You know, Krishna doesn't against anything. Uh, your life is very peaceful. Only thing is that because the material desires are not fulfilled, so we are upset about something in our life. Yeah, because we are thinking, if I got money, I'll be better, you know, if I got my own house, I'll be better. But those have already got money in their own house, you know, they're not happy. They've got their own problem. So, one problem is solved, there's another problem comes. But there's a nature of the material world, you know. So, only way is that, you know, be Krishna conscious. If you're conscious too much of, you know, the protection of this material world, you know, the, you know, the, you know, opulence of the material world, you're always going to be very unsatisfied in your life. Prabhupada says, simple living and I think, but unfortunately we are simply living without thinking. <laughs> Then, Prabhupada says, simple living and I thinking, we are simply, simply living <laughs> without any higher purpose of life. Okay, thank you so much for being here. I got 10 o'clock, I got a class to go with the Tamils. And uh, may Krishna bless our life that, you know, we can do, you know. And uh, the mother have to understand the world not dependent on you, you don't depend on the world. You know, you depend on Krishna. That's it. Nobody depends on you. Even the temple don't depend on you. You go to wait today, somebody else will be there. You know, but it's a great opportunity that Krishna has, you know, given you. You know, he selected you to help him on his work of Krishna consciousness. You know, for being a leader of a society is not that easy. You know, because you have to make sure that everything is taken care of very nicely. And when Krishna has chosen you to be the leader, because something good Krishna might have seen inside you. And you know, by engaging, you know, thinking about the welfare of the temple, wealth of the devotee, and you are busy, you are totally engaged, you are fully busy about this thing, you have no time for Maya. You know? And uh, you don't need to worry because, you know, you don't have a house, you know, you don't have a family to answer to anybody, you know. You are the boss. <laughs> You are the boss, boy. <laughs> Krishna is very kind, you know. Very kind. That somewhere he has given you the intelligence to come here. It's not easy for anybody to come, you know. Somewhere that you have done a, a great piety in your life. You know, and like Prabhupada writes one of the purpose, you know, Brahmanda, Brahmita, Kona, Bhagyaman, Jiva, that the living entities, you know, due to forgetfulness of Krishna, they're wandering all different planets, you know. But somewhere or other, those who are fortunate, you know, they come. So you're very fortunate that, you know, you have come to Krishna consciousness. At least you know the value of your life. Honestly, I tell you, there was a, a temple president in Malaysia, you know, that was about 15 years ago. That is the time that, you know, I was, I was, you know, diagnosed with cancer. Fifteen years ago, the doctors say very, you know, tiny chances, you know, chances are there that, you know, you can, you can survive. So I have to go for, you know, surgery. So I went for the surgery, I came out from the hospital. And this uh, temple president from one of the temple in Malaysia, you know, that's a major big temple. And he was only, you know, 37 or 38 years old that time. That time I was, you know, about 47, 48 years old. Now I'm about 63, you know. And I came on from the surgery, you know, I was lying down in the hospital. And then this Brahmachari president came to see me. He said, oh, Mala, you know, that time I was Prabhu, you know, he said, oh, I'm very sorry, you have to go through this difficulty, you know, very sad to see that you're lying down like this. Then I told him, you know, why you worry about me, you know, we are reading the same Prabhupada books, you know, I said, anybody can die at any time. I told him, maybe you may die before me, you know. And then after two months after they died, you know, <laughs> he, he's held everything perfect condition. 
And one time he even devotees had a meeting, you know, in somewhere on, on resort area. And he went there for the meeting and then in the morning they had a meeting that was on Aiga this day. And then afternoon they play football, you know, among them. And he collapsed and died. <laughs> you know. And the devotees were talking, you know, oh, how are we going to manage the temple now? He's the best, you know, manager. He was very good devotee, Brahmachari. You know, you go away already, we do not know what to do, how to manage, you know. But today, those who have spoken like that all become a manager. They have forgotten about him. Nobody talks about him, you know. Now they go to another chapter of their lives. So while you are around, you know, people talk about you. But you go away already after two, three days, one month, you know, people forget about you because there were a lot of other things to go on with life. So we are nobody here, you know. But you know, the great fortune, we have got this opportunity to purify our life, take your life here, you know, like Krishna says, so Krishna doesn't against anything, you are Brahmachari. Your Griyastha is a secondary subject matter, but you know, the primary subject matter is what? You must understand you've got a boss up there, it's nothing is belongs to you in this world. You come here, zero, you go back zero, that's it. Kundi Devi said, Kevayam Namaru Pabhyam Yadubisa, my dear Lord, because of you, they are flourishing. Yeah, the moment you go away, everything is over like a dead body, you know. So, you know, like that, you know, only important things, you know, whichever, uh, you know, environment you're situated, you understand Krishna is the supreme proprietor, is the supreme benefactor, you know. And our job is to offer everything to purify our life and always try to talk, think about Krishna. And Krishna says, you don't have any karma, you go back to him again. Very easy. Actually, Krishna consciousness is very easy. We are complicating everything because, you know, our mind is not settled down, you know. we got so many different plans in our life. You know, as I said, you know, if you really organize your life, you'll be seeing that most of the time you're happy. You know, my mother, before my mother died, she said, you're the happiest son in the family. You know, I was a devotee. My mother said, you know, all your brother married, you know, your sisters are married. Every time they go, they only talk about problems. You are the only person when you call, you know, you say, oh, Chan, be, Chan and be happy. I said, take prasada, mommy, you be happy. You are the only person never brought any problems to the family. You know, it's true. Today I see that thing, is there any problem in my life? I don't have any problem by myself. Only problem we face, because we are going out to preach to the people, we are interacting with the other people. That is where our problem is, you know? How to interact with the devotee, how to take care of them, how to help them. And in that interaction sometimes the devotee become pleased, somebody become don't please, and we go out to try to preach, you know? You know, that is our problem. But if you don't indulge with anybody, actually we have no problem at all. Today we can go and sit in my go and sit in Brindavan, you know, we can take some prasada, walk around, you know. You know, just China Hare Krishna, somewhere Krishna will take care of your life. But there's a higher purpose in life. You know, Mahaprabhu talks about all those things which, you know, we'll continue, I'll be here for next, you know, a month in Switzerland. You know, so we take it easy. Nobody worry about you. You know, Taitanya Mahaprabhu told, you know, about Dig Vijay. Dig Vijay came to Navadip. One of the friends came and said, you know, all the Brahmanas here, they have fear of Dig Vijay. They ran away from here. And Taitanya Mahaprabhu said, who is this Dig Vijay? He said, Krishna don't like people who are very proud in their life. Taitanya Mahaprabhu said, don't you know what happened to Ravana? Don't you know what happened to, you know, Hiraneka You know? And don't, don't you know what happened to you know, Putna? Anybody think they are very big and very strong and very proud is that Krishna will cut them off. <laughs> so, you know, we should not think that you know, we are very big. We are nobody here. It's only by the mercy of, you know, somewhere or other our piety of life, somewhere or other by the mercy of Vaishnava, you are here trying to be very humble. You are here trying to be very calm and peaceful, you know. Because the problem out there is much more, you know, horrible and it's uncontrollable, you know. You go anywhere, you know, there's so much, you know, happening in the world, somewhere or other. Uh, you are not doing anything bad to anybody. Take some prasadam and sit here, sleep here, chant Hare Krishna and your life is finished with you alone. But there are people out there, they are not letting themselves peacefully live and letting others also to live peaceful. You know, they are making trouble for themselves and making you know, trouble for everybody else, you know. I saw in the 
in the you know when they be in uh, in uh, Istanbul airport you know there's only one duty free it's only about cigarette you know and they are very big you know notice they put everywhere you know that you know smoking kills you know you die young you know smoking you know and then you get cancer smoking you know and then your mind become un you know everything you know about smoking you know and I see people are lining, <laughs> lining up, you know, to go and get killed. <laughs> you know, at least, you know. So that is a situation in the material world that, you know, they advertise no good, but, you know, they also, you know, give it to you, you die yourself, you know. But at least you are in the temple here, in many ways you're protected, you're very peaceful, you know. And that's all the thing, leave it to Krishna. Whichever way Krishna takes your life, you know, important, somewhere or other we should remain in Krishna consciousness, in any condition of life. You cannot please anybody in the world, you know, totally. Somewhere or everybody going to be, you know, somewhere or they're not happy with you. But that is the nature of this material world. It's flickering, you know. Krishna, you know, Raja Tamo Chabibu, Yasatum Bhavati Bharata, he said in the chapter 14 text, you know, 10 Krishna says, the, you know, the uh, happiness, you know, of the material world, the distress, you know, the modes of nature always flickering. Sometimes the sattva gun become prominent, sometimes the raja gun defeat, the sattva gun become prominent. It's always, you know, flickering all the time. So people are going through so much of, you know, you know conditional life. And you're okay, you're doing very well. Yeah? You are running one of the biggest and richest temple in the world, that's in Switzerland. Everybody thinks, you know, Switzerland, all the money is in Switzerland, and your temple is in Switzerland. <laughs> <laughs> but you may think, I don't have money, that's your problem, because there's money is there, but you don't know how to take the money and bring it to the temple. It is there. But all over the world, the money is there, you know. In India, you know, billion, billion, billions of, you know, dollars, you know, rich men, they pack their money in Switzerland. All over the world, people have packed, you know, their illegal money in Switzerland. Only thing, you do not know how to take the money out from there. So if you use your brain, if you go to Krishna, Krishna can help you. You know, where Krishna says, you know, I give you the intelligence, I give you the memory, I give you the forgetfulness. So anyway, I'm not going to ask you to go and drop the bank. <laughs> this thing, anyway, you know, uh, be happy. Chan and be happy. You are nobody here. Today you go away. Temple, they won't close down the temple. True no? Even Prabhupada go away. Nobody has car, no shut down his corner. <laughs> Isn't it? Even Lord Ram go away. No? Nobody shut down Ayodhya. So everything is there all the time. It's the eternal, you know, uh, plan of Krishna. You go, somebody else will come. Importantly, you remain happy because you know, nothing is moving on because of you. Everything is moving on because of Krishna. In chapter 10, text 39, Yachapi Saru Bhutan, he says, you know, I am the you know, generating father of all living beings. Whether moving or unmoving, nothing exists you know, without me. Everything exists because of Krishna, nothing else. You understand that one thing, Chapter 10, text 39, and you're not worried about life. Nobody bothers about you. Anybody bothers about you? You tell me, anybody bothers about you? You go away, let's say you go, leave Hare Krishna, go over today. What happened to the society, you tell me? Or oh, are they going to shut down? Every devotee is going to come and you know, sit in your house and crying, begging you, my dear the mother Prabhu, if you don't come, you know, we also don't want to be a devotee, we're going to sell the property, we're going to share the money and run away. Nobody bothers about anything. You go away, they say, Prabhu, why are you going into Maya? <laughs> they say, you are Maya, you know. <laughs> Sell anything. Don't worry about anything. You are a nice boy, you know, do something. For Krishna, that's it. We live for a very short time. Today and tomorrow, our life is over, finished. You know? We are nobody here. You know, Prabhupada said, you're you are, you know, flapping like a chicken, you know. You know the chicken, they cut the head, and the chicken goes like that sometimes, you know? It's not immediately that. He says, everybody in the material flapping for a moment for survival. 
Our life is over already. They already, Maya already cut your throat already. You're just flapping, <laughs> waiting for the right moment to close your chapter and go. That's it. Be happy. Be happy. Don't worry. <laughs> then it, there's a song, isn't it? Be happy, don't worry. Okay, thank you so much, Prabhu, for your time here. Jai Srila Prabhupada ki jai din tai gora pramanam. So this is Bhakti Mukunda Swami Maharaj ki jai. I began into, a, into this Switzerland mood. <laughs> I haven't got into the Switzerland mood yet, you know. What's the Switzerland mood? I'm in a Malaysian mood with the good weather, you know. And we normally we talk in the Tamil language. Mm -hmm. You know, suddenly coming to Switzerland, you know, we already got into a different mood, but the body is willing but the mind is not willing yet. That's where you will get into the season of the Yeah, here, right, yeah. Yeah. Here, yeah. Okay, so, okay. Okay. 